In this topic, we're going to discuss transport in humans, focusing on blood. So we'll look at what are the functions of blood and what are the different components of blood. So you've got plasma, red blood cells, the adaptations of red blood cells to carry oxygen, white blood cells, and these include phagocytes and lymphocytes. And then there's also a process called phagocytosis, which we'll also look at. Platelets, which are involved in blood clotting. So where you see words in purple in this video, fill them in in your notes. You know that blood is the key ingredient in horror movies, and it's got many functions. Do you know why blood is red? Well, this is because it's got a protein called hemoglobin in the red blood cells that carry the oxygen. Blood also transports carbon dioxide, glucose, amino acids, hormones, and minerals. White blood cells help fight against disease and foreign matter. And blood also helps to keep the environment and the body constant, so we call this homeostasis. Temperature and the volume of water examples. So what are the different components of blood? Well, if you spin your blood down in something called a centrifuge, it'll separate into different components. So have a look at this test tube. Can you see what your blood is made mostly of? It's plasma. This is the liquid part of the blood, and it's mostly made up of water. Then you've got red blood cells, which form about 45% of your blood. And the rest is white blood cells and platelets. Let's have a look at plasma. So plasma is the liquid part of the blood and it's made mostly of water. Soluble substances are transported in it, for example glucose, amino acids and mineral ions. Plasma also contains plasma proteins, carbon dioxide, and it also transports soluble waste such as urea, which is transported from the liver to the kidneys. So here's a diagram of a capillary and the cells of the body. Plasma can move out of the capillaries and into the spaces around the cells. This forms tissue fluid, which surrounds each cell. The proteins inside the capillaries are too large to move out, so only the liquid part moves out. So we say tissue fluid is plasma without the plasma proteins. So substances move between tissue fluid and the body cells, and the cells must be kept in a constant environment so their composition remains constant. We call this homeostasis. Okay, let's move on to red blood cells. Can you see that they make up about 45% of the blood? So you've got about 5 million red blood cells in one cubic millimeter of blood. And they only live for a few months, so they're removed by the liver and constantly replaced by the bone marrow. What do you notice about the shape of these red blood cells? They've got a shape called a biconcave shape, so they've got a dip in the middle. And this is one of the adaptations of red blood cells for transporting oxygen. So red blood cells transport oxygen. They contain a red pigment called hemoglobin. This is actually a protein. So if you have a look at the molecule of hemoglobin on the right, you'll notice that it's got iron in it. The blue circles represent iron. Hemoglobin combines with oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin. So where does your blood get the oxygen from? Well, as it flows past the lungs, it picks up the oxygen and then it releases it at the respiring tissues, where the oxygen level is low. So as I mentioned earlier, the red blood cells collect the oxygen at the lungs 
and transport it as oxyhemoglobin to the respiring cells. Oxygen will then diffuse into the tissue cells and be used in respiration to release carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide will then be transported from the respiring cells back to the lungs and it combines with hemoglobin to form carboxyhemoglobin. Red blood cells have special adaptations that help them to transport oxygen. Can you think of what these adaptations might be? So you need to copy down these adaptations in your notes. Well, they're small, so they can move through the small capillaries. They've got an increase surface area to volume ratio. This means that oxygen absorption is more efficient. They are biconcave, which increases the surface area for absorption of oxygen. And they do not have a nucleus. This increases the space inside the cells for hemoglobin. So where are red blood cells made and broken down? Well, red blood cells are made in the bone marrow and they're constantly being broken down in the liver. Some of the components are recycled. So the iron is reused and other molecules are used to make bile. Okay, having a look at white blood cells. If you have a look at blood under the microscope, you'll easily identify the red blood cells. These are the little red blobs. Can you see that you've also got other cells that look purplish and they've got large nuclei? These are your white blood cells. So they're your body's soldiers and they help fight against any nasty organisms, which we call pathogens, that might have invaded your body. So white blood cells help protect our body from organisms that cause disease. So we call these organisms pathogens. White blood cells are made in the bone marrow and they move around the blood or remain in the tissues or the lymph. And you've got two types that you need to know for IGCSE. Phagocytes and lymphocytes. So phagocytes are easy to identify in a form of blood on a slide. What do you notice about this phagocyte? Have a look at the shape of the nucleus. So we say that the nucleus is lobed and it kind of looks like a string of sausages. The cytoplasm is granular, which means that it contains granules. Now phagocytes are involved in something called phagocytosis. This means that they engulf any foreign matter. So fill this word in your notes, phagocytosis. So when bacteria or other pathogens are detected in the body, phagocytes move towards the infected area and they move by flowing cytoplasm. The cytoplasmic arms then flow around the bacteria and engulf it. These arms are called pseudopodia. The enzymes inside the phagocyte will then digest the pathogen or the bacteria and kill it. Okay, if you're doing extended, you need to make notes on tissue rejection. So you'll know from movies that sometimes people can receive an organ transplant, for example, in this case, a kidney, from another person. And this person's usually dead. The tissue type of the donor and recipient must be matched as closely as possible. Even with a good match, the recipient's immune system will recognize the new organ as foreign.
So what the body does is the body will send phagocytes to kill the new organ. This is because it's far into the body. And we call this tissue rejection. So people having an organ transplant will take immune suppressor drugs to stop their immune system working. This means that they can also easily catch any disease, so they have to be very careful. Would you consider being an organ donor when you die? Lymphocytes are also large cells in the blood and lymph system. They have a large nucleus and it's round as you can see in this picture here. So they're found in the blood and lymph system. So lymphocytes are pretty cool because they release chemicals called antibodies as you can see in this diagram here and these antibodies kill pathogens or bacteria or they make these bacteria easy for the phagocytes to kill the bacteria. So when you get sick, your lymphocytes are busy making antibodies. And then when you've got enough antibodies, you start feeling better. Now there are a lot of diseases that we only catch once. This is because the lymphocytes make antibodies. The next time you have more lymphocytes ready to make the right amount of um, antibodies so you can fight off the disease and don't get sick. So how do we use vaccination in this process? Well, the body's got antibodies and this forms immunity. If you give people a harmless form of a disease, they will start to make the antibodies. So when they come into contact with that disease, they've already got the antibodies and the white blood cells that recognize the um, disease, so they can fight off the disease faster. So we say that these people are immune to the disease. So when you're a baby, you get vaccinated against diseases that used to kill loads of children. The last constituent of blood that we're going to look at is platelets. So these are pieces of cell made in the bone marrow. Now when a blood vessel is damaged, blood will flow out. And if the skin is broken, then bacteria can move in. Platelets are tiny pieces of cells. So they're not actually cells. And they cause blood to clot so that you stop bleeding. So what they do is they produce an enzyme that converts something called soluble fibrinogen, which is a protein, to an insoluble protein called fibrin. Fibrin makes a net over the damaged area which platelets and red blood cells can become trapped in. So this forms a clot. So here you can see a clot. The red blood cells are being trapped by the fibrin. Now something interesting to know is that sometimes the blood rushes out of a wound so fast that it washes away the fibrin. So first aid, you would use a clean cloth, not a fluffy one that will leave bits behind, to press on the wound. This allows the fibrin to form so that the bleeding will stop. Also lift the bleeding area if you can. And remember to always wear gloves to prevent transfer of diseases. So here's a blood smear. Can you identify the red blood cells, the phagocyte and the lymphocyte? Okay, lastly, let's just compare red blood cells and white blood cells. So the shape of red blood cells is a biconcave disc. 
Phagocytes have an irregular shape, kind of looks circular. Lymphocytes are circular. Red blood cells are the smallest, phagocytes are the largest, and lymphocytes are pretty large. Nucleus, red blood cells don't have a nucleus. The nucleus in phagocytes is lobed, and in lymphocytes it's large and round. The function of red blood cells is to carry oxygen. Phagocytes engulf and digest pathogens, for example bacteria, and lymphocytes produce antibodies. How they work, red blood cells combine with oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin. Phagocytes are involved in a process called phagocytosis, so they digest bacteria um, using enzymes, and then lymphocytes come in contact with a pathogen and then they secrete antibodies specific to that pathogen. Okay, in summary, we've looked at the functions of blood, the different components, so you've got plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. And that concludes our lesson. The end.